We are reading The Road to Paris, Chapter 31, May 24. Dear Malcolm, thanks for my birthday card. I was afraid nobody would remember, like last year when we were at the booms. This year was better. Today, I got off from doing chores. I didn't even have to make my bed, but I made it anyway. You know me. I got a card from David and Jordan, and Erletta took me shopping at the 99 cent store and told me to buy whatever I wanted. I picked out a puzzle cause it made me think of you. You got any puzzles there? After dinner, Mom Lincoln set a big old ice cream cake right in front of me and everybody sang happy birthday. Erletta said Mom Lincoln always finds out the birthday of every foster kid when they get here, then writes it in a book so she won't forget. Do they have birthday parties for the kids where you are? I hope so. I gotta go. Love, Paris. Well, Paris always thinks of her brother. And I can understand that because you want to celebrate with your family on your birthday. So let's find out what happens next. As we venture in this story to chapter 32. So come back with me to chapter 32. We are reading The Road to Paris, Chapter 32, The Introduction. The first hot breath of late spring blew the chill from Riverview Road. No one who was home bothered closing their front door. So when Paris stepped onto Ashley's porch one afternoon, all that separated her from whoever sat in the living room was a thin sheet of screen. Paris rang the doorbell. Charlotte came a man's voice. Get the door. Ashley's dad, thought Paris. It must be. Now I'm finally going to meet him. What the hell is this little blonde-headed nigger girl doing darkening the door of my house? The slap of words knocked Paris back two feet. Before she could catch her breath, Ashley's mother was at the door. Speaking in a voice loud enough to carry through the house, Mrs. Corbett said, I told you yesterday, we don't buy cookies at this house. We make our own. Then in a voice close to a whisper, she said, This is not a good time, Paris. Go home. Cookies? thought Paris. What is she talking about? But Mrs. Corbett, Paris began, I don't. Go home, Paris. Mrs. Corbett whispered, Ashley Marie can't play with you. I'm sorry. Now go on home. In a louder voice, she said, and don't come back. With that, Mrs. Corbett slammed the door. And as she did, Paris caught a glimpse of Ashley hanging back in her mother's shadow. Paris retraced the steps to her house on wooden legs. She sat on the porch swing for a long time, trying to take in what had just happened. But like a stone skipped on water, the pain of it sent ripples of hurt throughout her mind and body, and Paris found it impossible to think. Instead, she stuck her right hand inside her pocket, and without knowing that she did so, she opened her mouth and began to sing. Jesus loved me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. As Paris sang, tears rolled down her cheeks. That was the last day Paris ever asked, asked Ashley to come out and play, and the last time Ashley would dare to call Paris her friend. Later that afternoon, Paris told Mrs. Lincoln what had happened, and once again, her eyes brimmed with tears. Mrs. Lincoln, who rarely gave hugs, pulled Paris into her arms. I'm sorry you had to hear such words, she said. But that's the way of the world, I'm afraid. There are hateful people in it, Paris, and some of them are white. I'll never have another white friend, Paris bowed. Don't say that, said Mrs. Lincoln. You can't go through life judging people by the color of their skin. But that's what Ashley's father did. Yes, honey, and he was wrong. Paris couldn't argue with that. Then what am I supposed to do? Take each person as they come, said Mrs. Lincoln. Judge them by their actions, then decide whether to hold them close or push them away. That's what you do. 
Paris listened carefully to Mrs. Lincoln's words. She tucked them away for further consideration and rested her head on the woman's chest. The remaining hours of the weekend limped along, dragging Paris with them. She tried to stay out back during the day to avoid running into Ashley, but on Monday morning, they all but collided in the doorway of their classroom. Paris half expected Ashley to drop her eyes and back away, too embarrassed to make eye contact. Instead, she looked longingly at Paris with eyes that said, I'm sorry. But Ashley seemed to have lost her voice. I was your friend, said Paris, meeting Ashley's gaze. You should have told your father that. Paris had nothing more to say, but as Ashley squeezed past her, Paris did notice that Ashley didn't stand as straight and proud as she used to. Shame had shriveled her somehow. Good, thought Paris. She should be ashamed. That was the last thought she spent on Ashley for a long time. All that truly lived at Paris' spirits after that horrible breakup was getting ready for her choir's next concert. The director had picked Paris for another solo, and she went around the house singing all day, determined to master each note. Singing was better than thinking, so Paris sang. Well, we're at the end of chapter 32. And like Paris, I enjoy singing too. And sometimes when you have a disappointment, it is better to concentrate on something that makes you happy. So we're going to see um, what happens next with Paris in chapter 33. So join me again in chapter 33.